Hello, NextGen students. Now that we've gotten into the program a little bit, I wanted to circle back and make sure that we're covering some of the basics. You should have learned quite a few moves in the basic skills tutorials, but I want to review a few things with you. Uh, one of those, first of all, is changing your view. Right now we are in a perspective view, which is kind of like how you would draw in an art class, and I want you to switch to orthographic view. Now, it, it doesn't change a lot here, but if I do this in the front view, in orthographic, it's, it's flat with the world. This is my XY plane, or my horizon line, right? But if I change it here, see how it's really weird and kind of hard to line up on things? So we want to work in this orthographic view all the time. And that's going to give us kind of straight on, or what's called undistorted views of our object, okay? Next thing I want to show you, and this is something that people have had question on, is how do I how do I make my block bigger like this versus if I want to lift it off and attach another block to it so if I bring another box in here and place it let's say I want to put a box on top of there I have to grab this arrow and lift up in order to lift it off of that XY plane and now I can move it over and I can start stacking boxes so I can see that oh my box is way out in space here though So I've got to go grab that box, go away, shape, there we go, and move it way over here. Now I can zoom in. And it's on this surface, okay, but I need to resize now and get it back down into a normal size box. There we go. So if I go to front view now, now I'm lined up. I want to make the box a little wider this way and I can continue to resize and place it or center it using numbers on here. Okay, again this cone lifts it up and elevates it and if I bring it back down to inside if I want to make a hole I can drop this back down but remember that in order to make a hole I can't have it be a solid I need this shape to actually be a hole and if I do that then I make a selection around these and I group those together and when I group them that hole is created and this one is a shelled hole it's not all the way through I could maybe set the, the depth deeper in order to do that I would have to ungroup them make my whole uh, box go deeper in now I'm just bringing it out see if I can lower it there we go I grab the cone and now I will select them both and group them and now I've got a hole all the way through what I don't have though is, is a good placement of that hole you can see that I don't really it's not in the center so how would I center that up well I've got to go ungroup them again and I've got to move that so that it's centered and a lot of times they will snap to center or we'll have to make them uh, a size so that they will. And if I wanted to create a shell or Swiss cheese this, that's one of those things we're going to learn about as we get closer to our custom designs. If I just wanted to make a shell or an outside of something, I would make it proportional all the way around and centered. This is actually called a, uh, what's the right word for it? Um, on offset is what it's called. So this smaller rectangle is offset, but I'd want to match the radius too. So check out this corner radius right here. I could make it really extreme, or I could try and match it with the other one so the corners kind of match. And then let's group those together. And take a look at what we got. Cool. Okay, so those are some things that I noticed right away. Notice on my back view, I'm still flat to the world. This is important for printing because if we do this and try and print it in midair, the printer can't do this. It gets really messed up. So we want to make sure that our drawing is always seated down on the XY plane. Okay, Our Z plane is the elevation here. That's going up. X and Y is looking this way. X and Y axes. Okay. Another one that I saw people struggling with is rotation. We get three rotation handles. This is the one we can see really easily here. So I can rotate at any degrees. And if I grab my rotation handle again, 
kind of tricky with the mouse pad here. There we go. I can set this back to uh, zero is back to 32 because it kind of, see how it snaps or defaults to some of those common angles? Remember I started goofed up, so I'm going to back up a little bit more here. There we go. And if I grab this, if I hold the shift key down, check this out, it snaps like a clock to the automatic 180, 135, 90s, which is straight up and down, 45, okay? But if I let the shift key go, then I get this infinite adjustability. It still snaps once in a while, but notice how I have to be really finite there. So hold the shift key down and it snaps, boom, 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 okay? And I'm gonna leave it back at zero. So those are some basics that, even though we went through basic skills, I, didn't, I, I don't think people necessarily got it. Um, I want to show you some exploring stuff right away. There's all kinds of things you can throw in here that we haven't seen yet. Um, mainly in, in Tinkercad here, we can do characters of all kinds. So these are objects that we can throw on and scale. If we want to put a little Astrobot out here, we can put him in the middle. Uh, let's shrink him down quite a bit. Hold the Shift key. Oh, this is another cool one, guys. Check this out. So right now, I kind of squish him around, and he gets really distorted, right? He doesn't maintain his proportions. But if I hold the shift key on the keyboard, he maintains his proportions. He just gets smaller or larger. Really cool feature for resizing. I'm going to zoom in, and I want him to be kind of embedded in here. But remember, if I want to lift him up and have him standing on the front of this thing, I'm going to grab right here on that pointer and lift him up. So he's standing on the front, and maybe shift him back a little bit. Let's see how he looks from the top view. Yep, pretty good and pretty centered. Liking it. Cool. So there's all kinds of stuff to explore in there. We're going to talk next about clearancing and fits. If I make this opening, how do I know I'm making it big enough for something to fit inside? But that'll be the next tutorial video.